Hello, ranchers, dippers, and dunkers alike. You are listening to Spill the Ranch. I am your host, Noelle Cheney, and I am so happy to be back. It has been a couple weeks, um, but we'll get into all of that in a second. But I'm just so happy to be back with you all, enjoying each other's company, and just having a good time. And so I just want to thank you for being so patient with me. Um, And yeah, we have a lot to discuss today. Our theme topic today is homecoming because it is that time of year. I believe my school's homecoming is in two weeks. So that's really exciting. Homecoming is always just such a fun time when you're in high school, at least for for me it was. <laughs> I really enjoyed homecoming. I loved all of the traditions that came with it. Each school does something a little different, a little uh, something a little special um, and unique for their own district or school. And it's just such a fun time of the year. It's fall. It's football. Who doesn't love football? I can't tell you anybody who doesn't love football because I love it so much. So yeah, I just love homecoming. I'm so excited to talk about it. We have some really good submissions today of some crazy stories that have happened to our listeners from homecoming. So before we get started, as always, please, 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 if you love the podcast, please give it a rating or a review, a raving review, if you will, on Spotify. If you are a Spotify listener, I would just really appreciate it if you gave us, you know, four or five stars um, because I do really work hard on this podcast and it just would really mean a lot to me if you could give it a review. And also, if you are interested in staying up to date with all things Spill the Ranch, please follow my Instagram, Spill the Ranch. That's what it's called, at Spill the Ranch. And then I also have my personal Instagram where I just post all things about my life. I post on there every single day. Um, and that's just Noelle Love Sloths. So go ahead and follow those two pages. If you're curious about seeing me on TikTok, you could follow me on TikTok too. I'm Noelle Love Sloths on all platforms. So, anyways, just thank you for listening. Thank you for tuning in. I know it's been a couple weeks. So that is kind of just what I want to talk about first is podcasting is hard. Yeah. So a lot of people think you can just like grab a microphone and like talk and like that'll be it and it's easy. But it's not that easy. Like for me, I go through like I write a whole script. Like I write all the points I want to talk about because if I don't write it out, then when I go to sit in front of the camera and film, like it just won't like I'm so scatterbrained and I'll forget things and then I'll go off on tangents. And so it really just doesn't work for me to not write everything out first. So I always start with that. If I'm like needing submissions, like days before I film, I'll have to get, you know, post on my Instagram, get those submissions in. And then once I write the script, then I have to get all my stuff ready and then I film and then I have to edit it, which takes a couple hours. And so all in every week, it's probably a good five to six hours just for one episode a week. And like maybe to some people that doesn't seem like a lot, but for me, because I am a full-time teacher, so I work from seven to four o'clock every day. I'm also a content creator, so I'm making content, doing brand deals for TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So I have all that stuff going on. I you know, at any given time, I have like multiple campaigns that I'm working on. And so it's just, a, it's a lot. And so on top of that, trying to do this podcast, like to just be very transparent, it's like, it it's not always my first priority. And over the summer it was because I could really focus on it and I could really just get into it and have fun with it. But now that I have all this other stuff going on, it's been just, it's just been hard And it's really sad because I really, really love doing this. It's just hard because I'm doing this all by myself. And like, it's just, it's been a lot more of a struggle than I, than I, I mean, I think I knew that it was going to be really hard. Like just from over the summer, I had a taste of like what the podcasting life would be like if I were to do it weekly. And, um, 
And that was even kind of a lot when I was on summer break. So the fact that now I ha- I still have to do this like every week on top of everything else I'm doing, which is a lot. Um, and then I also have wedding planning going on. Like that's another huge thing. And like obviously the wedding stuff kind of has to like come first in most situations. So yeah, um, that's just kind of why like I took two weeks off. I actually had one episode filmed but and I was like so I was ready to post it and everything and then I just was like this is not my best work and so I just took another week off and I am I'm considering like maybe going every other week and I hate to say that but I think I have one of two choices to start only posting two podcasts a month or bulk or like batch recording. So like recording multiple episodes at once. Like maybe I record all of my episodes for one month at the same time. But then again, it's like, okay, when do I find the time to set aside, you know, four to six hours? And like my weekends are so busy. I'm out of town a lot. So it's just like, I'm really trying to navigate it and I really want to make this work because I love, love, love doing this podcast. Like I seriously love it so much. Um, And I know I have a small community listening to me, but I'm just so grateful for everybody who's been tuning in. And so thanks for being patient with me as I, as I figure all of this out. So that's just, that's just what I've been up to trying to figure out how to post a weekly podcast while being a full-time teacher and content creator and planning my wedding. So, (laughs) so let's get into homecoming stuff. So I want to talk a little bit about some of my experiences from homecoming, homecoming in general, and then we'll get into the submissions. So, um, I attended when I was in high school, my high school had over 3000 students. I loved my high school. Like I'm obsessed with it. If I could go back and teach there, I would, because they are like very highly regarded like it was a great high school public school and anyways it was a big school you know we had over we had 750 kids per grade um and we had a lot of fun traditions like I mean most we probably did a lot of the same stuff that like most schools do we had a spirit week it was always my favorite um that pj day was always on a monday because Mondays are Mondays, you know, and it's so nice to be able to wear pajamas to school. So that was one of my favorite things. Like I would just wear like the coziest clothes to school. And actually it's funny because now a lot of students that I see literally wear what I would consider pajamas to school. But anyways, I'm not judging, just saying. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so for homecoming for me, I loved homecoming because I love football. I love going to watch football. Um, our student section was always bumping. Like we, it was always so full. Sometimes we would need to have like two student sections because so many people would come. So like, so for homecoming, we would do like two sections in the, um, bleachers. And it's actually kind of cool at my high school. Cause I don't really know if I've ever seen this before, but at our high school for the student section of the bleachers, they took out the seats So it's literally just standing. And because that makes more room for kids to like stand, you can literally have like three rows of kids. Like you can file in three rows of kids per row and you'd just be standing like so close to each other. But it made it like really, really fun. And we were just standing the whole time. So that was always fun. For the um, homecoming dance, I only went to two homecomings. I went my freshman year and my sophomore year. And then I didn't go my junior and senior year. And I'll actually get to that, why I didn't go a little later uh, in the submissions. But my freshman year homecoming was uh, honestly like, it's crazy to think that my freshman year homecoming was 13 years ago. 13 years ago yeah I'm 27 I would have been 14 oh my gosh so yeah 13 and 12 years ago 
It was the last time I went to homecoming. I went with a date both times um, with like a big group of my friends um, and we all had dates. Um, The first one. Okay, so I'm going to actually talk about like how they asked me both times. So the first one he asked me, he like got a betta fish, right? And it was um, he bought a whole betta fish in a bowl and everything and like left it on my doorstep and um and it said uh of of all the fish in the sea will you go to homecoming with me and it was like a real fish and I kept the fish as long as it stayed alive so that I thought that was really clever um and like both of the guys I went with like I wasn't dating or anything we were just like friends or maybe we had crushes on each other I honestly don't remember um but yeah so that was the first one and I thought that was really cute I remember though we were like really awkward (laughs) it was like really awkward but that's freshman year you know so you can't get like too worked up about that and then for sophomore year the guy who I went with we actually had known each other for like a really long time like since elementary school and he asked me I hosted like a bonfire at my house with like a bunch of kids in my grade were there and he came and he had like this poster. What did it say? Okay, now I can't remember what it says. I literally still have the poster. It is in my room, in my childhood bedroom at home. Like I still have it. I think I kept it unless my mom threw it away. Um but it had like glow sticks on it because it was like nighttime. So that was really cute. And so, yeah, that's how I got asked both times. And I thought both of those are really cute. Great job on the guy's part. Um, And yeah, both years I went with like big groups of kids. We had a party bus and we like stopped at the dance quickly, but then like mostly just like went to dinner, rode around on the party bus and then went to an after party. And now I have lightly spoken about this. Actually, maybe I, I haven't. But when I was in high school, I was not like a partier or a drinker or anything like that. I was like a huge goody two shoes. So like even if that was happening at the parties that I went to, like psh, I had no idea, at least not freshman and sophomore year. <laughs> so I'm sure that stuff maybe was going on, but I would have had no idea it would have been right. It would have gone right over my head. But but yeah, I thought the after parties were always fun. I just remember having a lot of fun at homecoming. But like I said, I was a goody two-shoes. So I was just like hanging with my friends, having fun. Um, And yeah, those are just kind of my dance experiences. At my high school, it was very, like the culture was very, you either don't go to the dance at all or you stop in for like 20 minutes and then you're on your way. Like that was very much the culture. Like we did, nobody spent time at the dances. So that was very much how it was at my high school. I would be interested to see like what it's like at other high schools. Um, cause like we really did not spend a lot of time at, uh, at the dances. Another thing I love about homecoming is just like the traditions and, I would love to hear like what your guys' homecoming traditions are. We would always have a parade in our downtown. Like we had a little downtown close to where the high school was and there would always be a parade and like, um, and before the parade, we would have a pep, a pep fest. We called it pep fest and it was in our school gym and that's where they would crown king and queen And so we would find out who king and queen was. And then at the parade, like they would get to, you know, be in the, um, they would get to ride in the, uh, the convertibles, um, and wave and wear their crowns and everything. So that was really cute. And since I was on the cross country team, I actually got to be in the parade because they did all of the fall sports. And so that was really fun. Um, there was one or two years that my dad drove the trailer for the cross country team and we all just sort of stood on the trailer (laughs) and we were like "Eh." um so that was really fun so those are just a couple traditions that my high school had and I will say though in terms of the dance homecoming I feel like when you're in high school it feels like just 
a lot of pressure. It's a lot of pressure to go to have the best date for the date to ask you in the cutest way to have the best dress, be the best dress, be on, uh, to be on homecoming court. Like there's just so much pressure and I feel like it just needs to not, like we just need to not have any pressure. Like you can go to homecoming without a date. You can not go to homecoming. Like you don't have to go. My junior, senior year, I didn't even go because I was like, well, I'm not dating anybody. Like I know that like no one's probably going to ask me unless like it was just a guy friend. I was like, I'm just not going to go like whatever. And so you can like totally do that too. So homecoming really is a lot of pressure, but I think it's like, it's meant to be fun. So just enjoy it. And honestly, when you're in high school, if you're somebody who's like, you know, you don't really love to be super social and like, you don't love going to stuff. I would say you should try to go to homecoming at least once, like just to see. And then if you don't like it, then like you never have to go again, but you might as well try, you know, because like you might love it. You really might. Another thing is I love seeing the homecoming asks when, you know, when the kids ask each other, I always think they are so clever and I love seeing like a really fun and clever ask and I think it's so fun. I feel like sometimes low key and can get like out of control when it's like really like extravagant, but I still think it's like so fun and cute. And like, I've been seeing a lot. I don't know if you've seen this one on TikTok, but I've seen it a few times where it's like a guy and a girl. Usually the guy is like the football player and then it's like a girl and they're posing for a picture and they look so cute. And then, um, a bunch of people come up behind them. So like the girl can't see because all these people are behind them and they're holding signs like, will you go to homecoming with me? And then someone runs up behind the guy and like gives him a bouquet of flowers. And again, the girl can't even see this because she thinks they're just posing for a picture. And then, um, and finally they're like, will you go to homecoming? And she turns around and she sees it and then she sees him with the flowers and oh, it's so cute. So I've been seeing a lot of that on TikTok and I think that is so adorable. So yeah, that's all my thoughts on homecoming. I love it. I love football. I just think it's so fun. It's so much school spirit, brings the school together. I mean, I'm somebody who like has grown up um, romanticizing high school. Like one of my favorite TV shows in the entire world, two of my favorite shows, One Tree Hill and Friday Night Lights. And those two, like, I feel like they just romanticize high school and like, I just love homecoming. It's so cute and fun. Even though I didn't even go to the dance two years, but like, I still love it, you know? I don't know. So those are my thoughts. So let's get into the submissions. So we have five submissions from some wonderful listeners of the podcast, and we're going to read through the submissions and I'm going to give my thoughts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's what we're going to do. I went to a conservative Catholic high school. The week of homecoming, they emphasized face-to-face and leave some space for the Holy Spirit in regards to how to behave at the dance. Come to find out, on the night of the dance, they had what they called a cool-off room. Anyone who was caught grinding had to go to the cool-off room, lol. They also breathalyzed everyone at the entrance of the dance. Okay, so the breathalyzing, I definitely understand, like, kids will be kids. They're going to, there's going to be kids that drink. There's going to be kids that show up drunk. And are they really stupid for that? Absolutely. But the breathalyzer, I understand. I actually think that's just really realistic. I mean, it's a liability for the schools. Like if one of their students shows up drunk to the dance, like it really just puts the school at risk. So they really can't be at the dance. Like, so that I understand. But I do, I do like that little saying, um, face to face and leave some space for the Holy Spirit. I just think that's so Catholic school and that is just a lovely little, uh, jingle. As far as the cool off room, I'm sorry, that is disgusting. I don't know. I don't like it. I don't like it. This is why I don't, um, usually volunteer to be a monitor (laughs) for the school dances um at some point I feel like I'm gonna have to do my part and help out but like 
yeah um gross hate that disgusting i don't have anything else to say on that (laughs) other than gross so gross um okay the next one three years ago at homecoming i was going with a friend because we didn't have boyfriends or a date as soon as we got to the dance she ditched me for no reason and she went off with one of my guy friends i was sitting by myself taking in the good vibes and a guy who was in my biology class walked over to me and said would you like to dance so i sprung to my feet and we spent the whole night dancing with each other and staring into each other's eyes that part was a bit cheesy sorry lol anyways i never heard from my friend until a year later when she put on her instagram story welcome baby number one i was obviously shocked and i messaged her congrats and obviously i asked about it she said the father was my guy friend that she had ditched me for on homecoming the year before i was shocked okay first of all i have so many questions did you end up dating the guy that you danced with because it sounds like you had a fabulous night i hope you danced the night away and started dating because that would be like a fairy tale ending and i just really hope i, I want to know what happened with him who is he did you end up being friends did you end up dating what happened The next thing we got to talk about girls, girls. So I want to know, was this like a best friend or was just, or was this just like a friend of a friend or an acquaintance? It, it almost sounds like this was somebody that you didn't know super well, but like, like you guys were like friends, but not like best friends because how did you, how could you have not heard from her after that? Like, and also, was this your senior year because, like, you didn't hear from her and then she was having a baby? So I'm wondering if maybe this was your senior year and then after graduation, like, you never saw her again. Um, But also, yeah, so she doesn't sound like a friend. Like, she sounds like someone who maybe you didn't know super well. Doesn't make it okay because you went to the dance together and she ditched you, which that brings me to my point of girls, girls. It is the worst when, you know, you think you're hanging out with somebody and then they ditch you for a boy. And there's a lot of girls who do this and they're, okay, let me, so there is a difference between like completely ditching a friend or like, like, I don't know, to me there, there's a difference, like sometimes especially when I was like in college, my friends and I, we would go out. And like, if I had a friend who like really wanted to talk to a boy, like I understood, you know what I mean? But it's another thing if they completely ditch you um, without like telling you, you know? And like, that just never feels good when you feel like one of your friends is only going out with you so that she can, you know, find a guy or like, you know, meet up with someone else. And so that's like never a good feeling. And it just kind of sounds like she maybe used you to just like get to the dance. And then once she found a better option of something to do, she just like left. And obviously she wasn't your friend because like you guys didn't talk for a long time. And that's probably for the better. But I really want to know if you ended up like dating this guy like he he sounds like a great guy he just asked you to dance I mean this is like stuff that never happens anymore this is unheard of boys don't actually ever walk up to a girl and ask her to dance like I don't remember the last time I've ever like heard of that happening because teenagers these days don't really talk to each other (laughs) they're always on their phones and maybe they would text you like um do you want to dance with me? But like a boy these days, I feel like wouldn't go up and ask. So like, I love that he did that. And that was so chivalrous of him. Honestly, Um, I wish more boys would act like men and do things like that and be chivalrous for women and, you know, young adult girls. So I'm sorry that she ditched you, but it sounds like you still had a good night because you were able to dance with someone cool and jokes on her because she lost someone who could have been a potential really amazing friend it really sounds like she's in a completely different place in her life and good for her but good for you too because 
you probably dodged a bullet on that friendship. Um, it is kind of saucy that it was the same guy that she had ditched you for. And like, I wonder, were you in contact with the guy during the year? Like, so did you know they were dating or what? Because like, did you just never hear from either of them again? Did you like homecomings in the fall? So like you would have seen them at school. So I just have so many questions about this one. I'm sorry that you were ditched, but I'm happy that you got to dance the night away with a cute boy. Okay, let's move on to the next story. Okay, this one is really funny. I wish I still had the photo, but I don't. I went to hop a fence by the football field so I didn't have to walk through the giant crowd and I got caught on the fence and ripped my leggings. Funny thing is that it was the shortest fence ever, like the height of me. Thank God I was wearing an oversized breast cancer awareness shirt and lived within walking distance. So... This is a wardrobe malfunction, if I've ever heard one. And actually, the next story is also another wardrobe malfunction. I love that, like, you tried to hop the fence and it didn't work. And honestly, it makes for such a good story. It kind of reminds me. So when I was in high school, or sorry, my high school, we had, like, the bleachers. But then next to the bleachers, there was this ginormous hill. And we called it the hill. And so since up until high school, you can't sit in the student section, like you can't sit in the student section. That's only for ninth, 10th, 11th, and 12th graders. And so if you are younger than that, like middle school or even like fifth or fourth grade, you can sit on the hill. This hill was disgusting. It was just mostly all dirt, but it's where you would go to watch the game if you weren't in high school yet. And I just remember... Those days were so fun because you would go with a group of your friends and like hope that the group of guys you had crushes on were going to be there and you would hope that they would be there so that you could like sit next to them. And it just brought back like those memories of like those chilly nights watching football. You're, you're sitting in dirt. You're disgusting. By the time you get home, you like need a shower. So that just brought back some memories, but And also the breast cancer awareness shirt, like if that doesn't bring that back memories, we always, obviously October is breast cancer awareness month. And so we would always have one game in October where we would all wear pink and we would, every year we would make um, like the breast cancer awareness shirts and people would buy them and they would like go towards breast cancer awareness. Um, And so that also brings back memories like wearing the pink and um so yeah it is a good thing you're wearing a long shirt um glad you didn't break any bones um good thing it was just the leggings that were injured um in the process of this story but thank you for submitting (laughs) it's funny okay we have two more stories this next one um the last one is really short but so really we just kind of just have one okay the fourth story My sophomore year homecoming, I had a huge crush on this one guy, but he was with another girl at the time. So I made up my mind to go to homecoming with a super hot date to make the guy I liked jealous. Except my date and I didn't really know each other very well, so the whole night was just really awkward. It was awkward conversation and weird dancing. My feet started to hurt, so I decided to take my heels off. My dress was tight and I had to bend over to take off the heels, but as I reached down, the whole side of my dress split open and I almost flashed everyone. However, I decided my night would not be finished. So I took a huge strip of painter's tape, which happened to be almost the same color of my dress, and taped the whole thing shut for the night. P.S. I am now with the guy that I was trying to make jealous and we have homecoming in a month. I love when we get a happy ending to a story. So I love that we know that these two are dating, her plan worked, tape and all. Um, So another wardrobe malfunction. Um, I love that you took the initiative to really just strategically make your crush jealous. And I feel like that's a universal 
strategy that we've all not maybe not the same strategy but a universal thing that we have all experienced we've all had crushes we've all tried to figure out ways to get them to like us or to get us get them to notice us and this is a surefire way first of all your dress splitting open I'm sure um and wearing tape was probably a good way to get noticed um but he probably already liked you honestly um that's just my inkling but that universal feeling of like wanting him to notice you. So I love that you took the initiative, got a really hot date and like it worked. It literally worked. So hats off to you because that is a very well executed plan, might I say, Um, especially because it did not all go according to plan. The night was awkward with your date, which I'm sure the guy you liked didn't even notice that. He was probably just so jealous that you were with somebody else. This feels like a movie, honestly. Oh my gosh. And then the fact that your dress split open, like that really clearly was not going according to plan. But I love that you just taped it and like owned it. This reminds me of of something. Like a scene. Oh, it reminds me of Regina George when they like cut her tank top and then she just like, rocks it anyway and she just like wears it and everybody's like oh my god she's so cool that is you like you did not let your dress splitting open stop you from having literally the best night of your life and getting the guy of your dreams so I love this for you I am like in awe honestly like I wish I had that confidence when I was in high school because I definitely didn't like the confidence you must have had first of all to take this random guy as your date. And then second of all, to tape your dress, like you are a confident queen and I love it. So, and happy homecoming almost to you and your boyfriend. So let's move on to the last story. We are almost done here, unfortunately. So sad. And this one's a little shorter. I passed out at my junior homecoming due to dehydration, so much dancing and the heat in the gym. So this brings me to why are gyms always so hot? Okay, first of all, I just want to say something. I can hear my fiance like walking around and I really don't want him to be listening to me recording this. (laughs) I shouldn't be embarrassed because he loves me, obviously. But um, I can hear him. I can hear him like tiptoeing around, trying not to be loud because I told him I was recording. He's so sweet. Okay. Anyways, high school gyms are always so hot and it's just like, honestly, so unnecessary. And it actually, first of all, I'm so sorry that you passed out. That must've been really, really scary. I can only imagine. I really hope you didn't get hurt. Uh, Passing out just sounds really, really scary. Um, Surprisingly, I never have. The closest I've ever been to passing out was this past summer when I was at Dollywood and I rode a roller coaster and we, it was like, It went like upside down for like, I feel like a little longer than it should have. I think I was just upside down for like a half a second too long. And I almost felt like I was going to pass out and then, but then I didn't. And so that anyways, but I just can't imagine how scary it would be like when you wake up. So I'm so sorry that happened to you. And they really need to work on getting air conditioning in those gyms. Like seriously, put air conditioning in the gyms. It's ridiculous. Especially if you live in a state that like, like in Kansas, it's hot here for like, seven or eight months out of the year so like get it together schools put air conditioning in the gym project put air conditioning in the gym like let's let's make it happen we want ac and we want it now like that's what we want so this is all i've had this is all i have today um i've had such a lovely time talking to you all i'm so glad you all tuned in after my two week hiatus, again, I'm so sorry, but like life has been so busy and I've just been trying to navigate having a full-time job, being a full-time content creator and also making a podcast. So thank you for being patient with me. Um, don't forget to, if you are a Spotify listener to give me a raving review and some five stars and follow both of my Spill the Ranch and Noelle of Sloth's pages on Instagram so that you don't miss anything going on with the podcast or in my life. 
So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I loved talking about homecoming with you all. So many great stories. Thank you for the submissions. Um, honestly, homecoming is so fun. Like I can't wait for my, my school's homecoming. It's in a couple weeks. We've got spirit days. We've got pajama day. I think that we also have Adam Sandler day. So I'm really excited to dress up like Adam Sandler. I think that's going to be really fun. Um, so yeah, just enjoy homecoming. If you are on the fence about going, find a friend. If you, if you don't have a date, find a friend and just go together and see if you like it. You probably will because it is just one of those things in high school that I really think everybody should try because like you're only in high school once. Even if you don't like high school, like just do it. These are like the fun things that you can do in high school. And I am very much on the train of like enjoy high school because trust me, life gets life gets hard when you're in the real world. It, it really does. So I hope you guys all have so much fun at all your homecomings. Send me pictures, send me stories. I can't wait to hear all about homecoming for everybody and yeah, I will see you guys next week, hopefully. And I love you all. And thank you for listening. Bye.